So anyway, you you did a good job of of saying that you thought of when you read your own blog in the mind of a skeptic that it looked like it's nuts, it's crazy, it's silly, it's stupid. And yeah, you're right. That does look what it looks like. It looks like some kind of cult and some people, you know, getting together and blah blah blah, blah or something or whatever. And uh, I was speaking in tongues. I don't know if he actually speaking in tongues. I did when I was a Christian. Although we didn't get the three people together to try to interpolate, you know, try to, to do the thing. Which we, I guess we should have had, but anyway, they weren't very good Christians or something. But anyway, yeah, I did the whole thing. And you also say that your reason for me to believe in Christianity, that, you know, the book is by, from God or something like this, and you have faith, because you have some undeniable experiences that you're going to show to us. Well, I have undeniable experiences, too. What you can't deny is the source of those experiences. But anyway, I guess we can try, you know, you can say that your experience is from your God, and I can say they are from the invisible pink unicorn, peace be under our holy host. And I guess we can say whose experiences were most unlikely or something. Although, of course, without saying which experience you expect to begin with, every experience is just as likely as every other one. I mean, if you draw a card out of the deck and it's the ace of spades, we can say that's very unlikely, but unless you say that that's what you was looking for, it, it is not as, it's not any miracle or anything that's uh, uncommon. Um, anything unstatistically biased or something. It's not statistically biased. And you also say that I should look for signs from God. Uh, I shouldn't be close-minded. That's what I said earlier. Even though that you said yourself uh, that you would never stop praying to Jesus. Now, if I say I never will pray to Jesus, it looks like, well, you know, I, you know, you can't show me any proof of Jesus and I'm not going to listen to, you know, any Holy Spirit or, you know, nothing. And so I'm never going to pray to Jesus. I've already decided now he's false and, you know, no matter what you say is, is going to prove it to me. But, of course, it sounds completely reasonable for you to say I'll never stop believing in Jesus, uh, you know, no matter what you're shown or what you discover in the future, even though you say in another video you can have some experiences, uh, that would make it contrary. So anyway, I guess before I get off that point, that's going to be my question to you. What are those experiences you was talking about? You said you could have experiences that would um, deconfirm the other experiences that you had. So I'd like to know what kind of things those might have been. I, I really can't think of any. If I was a Christian, I could justify anything that happened to me. Good, bad, if I prayed for something, something completely opposite happened, um, I could justify anything, and I think you could too. I think you would. So I don't know what kind of experience would uh, make you question your belief even, even more. I mean, uh, anymore. If you say that you do question, everybody will say, well, that's good of you to question. And then you say, well, it's a sin for you to question your own belief. Science, that you say that you like, is actually made the way that it's made, Occam's razor and everything, is because of cognitive bias. That's its sole purpose, is to get rid of cognitive bias in people. Or so that people can detect it on their own because they have some external means that they can test it with. Religion, on the other hand, is completely opposite. It actually encourages cognitive bias. There's no testing. Um, you take things on faith without absolutely any evidence. If somebody challenges you, it actually makes you stronger in your faith. You can find this on many websites. Um, actually, I was looking at cognitive bias on some Christians' websites, and that's what they said. If somebody makes a bad argument, then you can gently tell them their fault and if they make a good argument, well, now you've been challenged and it'll make you stronger. They didn't say, actually, it might be disproving us. That's not what they said. They said it would actually make you stronger. Somebody making a good argument against you. And that was the best website I could find on cognitive bias. They probably don't teach that in church much. So anyway, that's my question. Uh, the question that I want you to ask me is that I have certain, you know what I believe about the world. For instance, you asked me about my first name. I actually have a secret name that I don't think anybody knows. And there's a story behind it. And you say if you want another purpose of a book or the intention of a book, you ask this author. Of course, it's God. Well, since you're asking God about a book, why don't you ask him about me? If you're going to know a person, why don't you just ask the person's creator, which is God. So ask him about that, too. Ask him what my full name is. Actually, there's an atheist on here with my same name. That's kind of creepy. Or ask him what my secret name is and the story behind it. It's not justification to you, because you're talking to God, and he says it, and okay. But justify it, I mean, uh, prove it to me, because I say you will not be able to tell that. Or if you want to think of some other test that I want to say something about the world, and you would say it would have happened some other way, and I can test it, and if it happened your way, well, that is some pretty good testing that I would 
uh, be mighty impressed with. So that's the kind of things. I want you to actually challenge me. Uh, give me some things that would falsify my position. Um, anyway, I guess I guess that's it. Going back to uh, winding some Tesla coils. <laughs>